Rub up your engines! Okay, everybody's in a quandary these days. The price of the average used car in the United States is now over $29,000. Here is a nice Honda Accord, but it's got a lot of miles on it. And he wants me to tell him, should it stay or should it go? Should he keep it, maybe put a little bit into it, or should he say, well, I got enough out of this and look for something else? I mean, it certainly looks fine. Let's see what kind of mileage it's got on it. It's got 267,835 miles. What does it sound like? Typical Honda, it starts right up, put it in gear. Doesn't really shake. We'll look under the hood. And here we have the IV Tech 2.4 double overhead cam engine. One, two, three, four cylinders. This is what I advise people to buy, the four cylinders. The V6s, yeah, they got more horsepower. They wear out faster. They get worse gas mileage. Now he's maintained it correctly. He watches my videos. He recently had the valves adjusted. You need to adjust valves in a Honda. That's just how they are. You gotta loosen the bolts, turn the screws, adjust the valves. But of course, it's a four-cylinder engine. So it's a lot easier to adjust the valves than it is in a V6 where you gotta take all kinds of crap off to do it. Now just looking at it superficially, car's in good shape, paint's in good shape, he hasn't bashed it up. And yes, these are my favorite accords. Check it out. Made in Japan, just by seeing the Made in Japan moniker. Leaning towards, keep this thing, don't get rid of it, because they make them best there. There's no arguing that. But, I'm getting my fancy scan tool, we'll give it a really good analysis. So we'll plug in the scanner, turn the tool on. Realize with the modern cars getting so expensive used, you want to go through with a really good scan tool or your old car to see. It might still have quite a bit of life left in it. He's done a good job maintaining on his car. Here we go with the smart scan. It's going to go through all these systems. And there it is. A lot of stuff it can go through. Now, unfortunately, you really need a guy like me to check these cars out thoroughly. They're extremely complex. There's all kinds of stuff in them. With a machine like this, you can see what's wrong and you can decide, hmm, tire pressure monitoring system doesn't work right. Rather than spend a fortune, get a tire gauge and measure your own tire pressure. Stuff like that. If the engine or tranny's going out, certainly you'd want to get rid of the car. You're not going to put a ton of money in an engine or a transmission on a vehicle that's got you know, over a quarter of a million miles on it. The only code is an ABS code. From that, everything is either normal or it isn't equipped on this car. So, it's looking good so far. We'll check the ABS just to see what the heck it's doing. Right rear wheel speed sensor failure. So big deal, ABS systems don't operate that good when the cars get this old anyways. And there's a battery voltage failure. Just a weak battery will often do that. So, I mean, what the heck, just out of curiosity. We'll turn the car off. And we'll turn it on and we'll clear the trouble code. We'll see if it comes back when we road test it. But we'll start it back up. The main system of the car. The computer system. We'll select them all. 113 things we need to look at. And now we'll start looking. It's running very slightly lean. Both the short term and the long term fuel trim is a little over 1%. So it's running a little bit lean. Over a quarter of a million miles. They'll often run a tiny bit lean. You could clean the fuel injection system if it went. But it's nothing to worry about. That many miles. It's usually a lot worse than that. <laughs> So we'll continue on. The voltage is charging good. And there's no history of misfires. All the cylinders are 0.00, .00 misfiring. She's got about the correct flow. Well, so far it chose to be in excellent shape, but now we're going to take it for a road test to see what you should listen for and what you should expect for a good car versus a bad car. Put it in gear and we'll see. Does it shake? No, it's not shaking at all even with all that mileage. And here we go up the hill. Now what we'll do is we'll get going and then we'll just glide. I just hear normal sounds. I don't hear roaring wheel bearings. I don't hear any groaning. Sounds normal. If you would corner hard like this and hear roaring noises, that would mean wheel bearings are wearing out. But they aren't. All that's in excellent shape. Got nice responsive handling. We'll check the brakes out, get going a little faster, and then perfectly stopping brakes they're in excellent shape take it out in the country here we'll see how this thing still accelerates regular automatic tranny here we go it's spinning those tires transmission shifts like a dream engine's got plenty of horsepower for a four-cylinder engine 
smooth. I like all the wheel. It's not pulling. It tracks good. Like I said, no bearing noises. This car is still in excellent shape. He'd be a fool to get rid of this car and buy something else. He'd be lucky to find a used car that was in good shape as this one is. Tell you the truth. Steering is smooth and responsive. Doesn't oversteer, doesn't understeer. This was one solid built car and it's still in excellent shape. Basically, this thing is like a small flying carpet. I think it's got a lot more life left in it. Now, like I said earlier, this is why I'm a fan of these four cylinder engines. They got plenty of horsepower. They last a long time. There's less things to go wrong. Honda makes excellent engines. And in this case, it's a 2.4 liter four cylinder IV tech, but it's naturally aspirated. Doesn't have a turbocharger. Doesn't have GDI fuel injection system. It's a normal Honda engine that can run. It's got plenty enough horsepower. You do not need a V6 engine in one of these things. This is plenty fast enough and it lasts plenty long enough. Enough power to pull these things. And a simple inline four, you get a longer lifespan out of them. That's just how it is. So what's my conclusion? I told him he's crazy if he goes and gets rid of this and gets another car because he's going to buy a used car if he does. And he'd be lucky to find one that's as in good shape as the one he already has. There would be no sense to get rid of it. And I know a lot of people are contrarians. And they're going to say, the price of used cars is up. He can get good money for it. Yeah, well, he's got to buy another car, right? <laughs> you're still in the same boat so what if you got a lot of money for your car you're gonna buy another one and it's gonna be a gamble because it's a used car and the prices have gone high so in this case definitely keep the car don't get involved in this outrageously expensive used car market that exists today with the average car going for more than 29 grand like this take care of it and keep driving it people he had the valves adjusted he changes the oil he changes the transmission fluid regularly you saw how well it still shifted so you do the maintenance you take care of it don't throw your money away on some super expensive used car just because you're tired of yours or if you're worried that it's not going to last any longer it does have 267,000 miles more than a quarter of a million miles but there's plenty more where that came from in this made in japan honda accord and here's some bonus questions and answers well here we go with tesla's failing infrastructure recently tesla gave a software update and it turns out a bunch of these canadians what was real cold the heater stopped working now this is for the model y and the model 3. now last year tesla had to replace sensors for heating on all their vehicles because they had bugs i mean they had so many bugs in these things it's unbelievable they need to get an exterminator for them <laughs> Maybe exterminate the whole company, if you ask me. And here's the result of some of their updating. Tyler Selvig says, Our Model Y could have killed my family. The heat stopped working when it was minus 40 degrees Celsius. I called service. Reset and auto didn't fix it. I was an hour away. Luckily, we had a family and an ice vehicle come by, and I put my two kids in and made it back where we're headed. You pay all that money for a car, and a heater won't even work. And these are relatively new cars. Imagine as they age. You know, a heater in a normal car is pretty simple. It's hot water that goes through a little radiator inside the car that's called the heater core and gets you hot. Works pretty good, right? Well, with this electronic crap, not so much. The colder it is, the less your battery's gonna last because you use that electricity to heat yourself up too. That's one advantage of internal combustion engines. They have a lot of waste heat. Well, it's not waste when it's 40 degrees below. You love that then. <laughs> you're gonna be wasted if you don't have any. You're gonna freeze to death, so. Yes, another problem with Tesla's. What a shocker. Tell you how to do B says, my 05 TC Scion is stalling. Got 199,000 miles. Had coils 1, 2, 3, and 4 misfire fail. It'll start and run for 5 minutes and stall and turn off. After it stalls, it only cranks, but it won't start. Then, it'll start. Electrical power is always there. I replace starter, spark plug, coils. Put a new battery in. I'm thinking of crankshaft position sense and fuel injectors. All right. Well, don't guess. Now, you said after 5 minutes, it'll shut off. When it shuts off, do my video. Fixing a car that cranks but doesn't start up, Scotty. Watch that. If you got no fuel, odds are your fuel pump's going out. Hey, it's an 05, got almost 200,000 miles. If the fuel pump goes out, it'll do the same thing. But before you change the fuel pump, first change the fuel filter. Because if it's clogged, it can do the same thing. That's a more common thing. Because as it's old, the pump gets old, it runs a little, and then it stops running because it's out. It could easily be either a clogged fuel filter or a bad fuel pump. Change the filter first. 
then pressure test the fuel pump. And if you find when it dies and you crank it and you got no fuel pressure, it's the fuel pump. That's a common thing. When they will run for five minutes and then shut off and then later they start right up again. You want to check that first. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.